fractions, capitalizing, but also it takes, I take all my ums out as well. And I'll sometimes shorten some stuff because I want them, what will happen sometimes, like, I don't know if you guys, but sometimes I'm in bed looking at my phone and I don't want to, I want to see what the video says, but I don't want to wake my wife up. Um, so sometimes captions are good to see what the video is talking about, right? Um, personally, yeah. <laughs> I want to give you some tips and tricks. And okay. Um, and then keep it short. I think we have a short attention span. Um, so 45 seconds or less, um, I think is a great uh, time period. Uh, you know, for the FAQs, you know, a lot of times don't get too in depth. Give them just enough that they're wanting more, that they almost have to contact you to kind of get the end of the story, right? Um, images. So for, for images, I recommend having no more than 20%, and this is a face, Facebook rule and I'll tell you why, 20% of your image has text on it. You need to have less than 20% of the image having text on it. Um, so sometimes you, know, you can have a program like Canva or other programs where you can write on top of a, a photo. Uh, Facebook, when you go to promote the video, when you go to your ads manager and try to uh, get it pushed out there with some money, uh, they'll reject ads that have more than 20% text on the photo. You have to watch out if your company logo is read by Facebook as text or if it's read as an image. If it's read as an image, you're okay. If it's read as text and your name is nice and big because that's part of your <coughs> logo, yeah. you can get into a real battle. Yeah, exactly. So do you guys understand that nuance? So again, if you're posting images of a product and you put your logo in the bottom, uh, you have to be careful how big you make it or if you're like, well, you know, we're open extended holiday hours and you got a bunch of text all over that photo, it's gonna get rejected down the road if you go to promote the video or the, the We're just image. any, I mean, we have trouble with it because our logo has our name in it. It's nothing but yep. text. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, and a lot of the, probably a lot of the promotional stuff you do has a lot of right. text in it. So when you go to promote it, that's that's an issue. It's a big issue. <clears throat> yep. Um, images. So when also when it comes to images, there's a couple different image sections. They now they're, and they're continually adding on more tools with Facebook, with the carousels and collages um, and albums. I really like, at least in our business, I like the four uh, picture gallery. I think it gives you, a, for the real estate that you've got on the ad, it gives you a lot of exposure and gives you an opportunity to promote a couple, excuse me, a couple different things. Um, let me just show you real quick what I'm talking about. When it comes to, for real estate, which is very image driven, So this is a uh, four gallery image, right? Um, it just gives you the you know four photos. One gets large and three are smaller. Um, I find this is a, is a really nice suite. They don't have to click anything extra to see all four. Um, sometimes you'll see people throw a huge album up there. Um, let me show you, I got, a, got an AB here. Um, so these are images. Uh, this is one realtor put this on the just your left hand side um, a property used terrible photography and they've got 16 more horrible photos I mean who's <laughs> clicking through um, three of the photos are identical right so if they want to tell a story here they, they told you the story that you don't want to ever cook in this kitchen um, <laughs> it's pretty terrible um, and there's a lonely uh, dining room here that you probably never want to go into either um, so I, I find this one kind of uh, offensive here's a nice one um, and especially put yourself in your consumers shoes in our business realtors tend to think of the property is the front of the house right but we all, like how long do you stand in front of your house looking at the gutters and shutters, <laughs> right? Maybe 30 seconds a day, right? When you're coming into the house, where you spend your time is in the living room, in the dining room, in that rec room, right? So show those parts off of the, uh, of the product that you're pushing.
Uh, recognition. Another really good post is to recognize other people. And I put in here, remember this is social media, right? This, this isn't just all about products and information. This is about people, right? So promote people, right? I'm an employee of the week, employee of the month, right? You, one of your clients who did something great, right? Promote them. That's where this connection happens, where you wind up connecting with other people. You connect with their spheres of influence. They become more aware of your brand um, as you're promoting other people. Um, so find you know staff, customers, and other vendors. You know, constantly promote them. I think it's always a really good idea. Other things in your ads, make sure you've got calls to action. Um, I've seen some ads that come off really, you know, a really nice ad, but there is no call to action at the end of it, right? What do you want me to do at the end of this ad, right? It's, you know, they're kind of left wanting with nowhere else to go. Um, with that said, the next one, or skipping one is links. Always have a link in your ad where they can go for more information, right? Drive them, so that's the beauty of Facebook and you know, I, I got into business in 96 and it was all print driven, right? And we worked, we had these little books that we had that were like word guides that like you had to be so precise with your words and try to get someone, you know, the call to action was basically they either picked up the phone and called you, they drove to your office or they drove to that property to meet you at an open house. That was the call to action, right? On Facebook, all you have to do is just get them to take a click further, right? Get them closer to your brand, get them closer, get them closer. But if you give them kind of the, the whole picture, right? Sometimes people are like, meh, I don't know if I necessarily want that or want it right now. But if you just get them kind of wet their appetite, get them to click through onto your, your, your website um, or your product page, whatever it is, get them to come closer to your brand. Now you, you kind of elevate where you are in their mind. What do you um, feel they should link to? <clears throat> I'm sorry? What do you feel the link should go to? Uh, I think it depends on your business. I mean, I think ideally your your homepage of your business, mm -hmm. um, but what, if you're- Your website or your- Yeah, website. exactly. I mean, if, if you're talking about, you know, a particular product, maybe to the, the page on your business that talks about that product, if, it's, if you're talking kind of about yourselves or, you know, how you do your business, maybe it's to a video page that has your, you know, kind of your profiles on it. Um, for me, on, on my real estate page, I always link them back to the virtual tour. So what I do on mine is I don't give them that, that I don't whatever house you're talking about. Yep. I don't give them the address, I don't give them the sales price, I don't give them the height of the cabinets, I don't give them the number of bedrooms, I don't give them the acreage, right? Because what I want to do is give them really nice pictures, right? Get, create a really nice image of this property that maybe, I don't know, this property could be anywhere in Montgomery County. I, let me find out more information click through, now they're on my virtual tour site. So now they can learn more about me, how I market properties, right? I've gotten them closer to my brand, as opposed to trying to throw everything onto one ad, trying to get them to click through. Um, but they may have said, ah, it's in Germantown, no thanks, right? And this one, they're, they might click on it, ah, it's in Germantown, but hey, this guy does really good ads. This guy does good product. Oh, let me look at the reviews. Oh, wow, there's other people, my CPA uses them, you know? so. You've got an opportunity to get people closer to your brand. So just have good information on your ads, but leave them wanting a little bit more. Um, events. Events is another great Facebook post. So if you do any events, is to create an event. Um, for instance, for this, So today, today's event was uh, created as a post. Oops, that's the network mixer. What will happen is um, Facebook, if you, let's say you are interested in going to an event today at the only library, right? There's a puppet show, right? You click on it, you're like, we are, you know, kids are love puppet shows, right? You're going <laughs> to the puppet show today. Facebook will put up local events that are going on at the same time, thinking that you might be interested in walking three blocks down the road to the Facebook marketing class, right? So there's ways that if you're gonna do events, load them up as an event in Facebook because you can be geolocated, right? For other people looking at events that are similar. Do you guys use events ever? 
Okay. Do you have to be hosting them? I don't. Do you have to be hosting them, or just see everybody at such and such an event? Or um, so it's if you're hosting work? an event, right. yeah, if you're yes. creating an event, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just a you know it's an educational event, mm -hmm. similar to something like we're doing here for the chamber. Uh, you know, we're pushing out a product or kind of an education on something. Um, in real estate, we do open houses. We right. post that as an event. Um, if you have an open house for your for your business, you know. And who will see that? All of, just all of your friends, and then all of their friends' friends. So it's typically that, people who who, without putting any, and we'll get into when you put money into some of these posts. Right. Um, people who who are geolocating for events, right? If they go to the event part of Facebook looking for events that are going on today in Albany, okay. or if one of your friends is going to Robin's open house, um, they may see that. Oh, you know, you may see that your friend's going. You might have interest in, in taking a look at. The events don't get as much publicity on news feeds um, as posts do, but there's still some value in it. Um, and then I talked a little bit about the 431. So again, this is getting back to my business. Four photos, tell them three things, and give them one link, right? That's, that's my formula for success. Okay. Moving on, next is how frequently should I post? No, that way, what was the three again, Joe? So four photos, three things, right? So three things to kind of entice them into, you know, why they should use that product or uh, service, and then have a link. They're concise, I just find that it's, it's a good way. I find when, when I have to click the see more button, sometimes I, I pause before I click that button. Do I really want to see more of this? It's funny. I mean, I, I think we're just, we're, we're getting really lazy. Um, but so I think you gotta, you gotta give it to people, have really quality stuff, but give them less quality. I guess, let, you know, what is it? Less quantity, less quantity and more quality. Exactly, right. Okay, um, so how frequently should I post? Again, I leave this up to your discretion. I think, like we talked about, I think it depends on your sales cycle. How frequently you should post and what type of page you're running like I was showing you with that consulting page that I've got I don't want to clutter that page with a bunch of articles that's gonna you know make the each of the the videos a mile apart I want them to come on if they want to find out more quickly they can find out a lot of really deep information as opposed to a bunch of fluff because sometimes I see a lot of people post a lot of fluff on their Facebook pages and it just clutters their page when I'm if I go on their business page to learn about them all I, I've seen the, the fifth, the same post that they just reposted. I'm like kind of done. Okay. Uh, boost post versus ads manager. You guys ever seen this boost post? Yes. Okay. All right. Don't ever push it. Okay. <laughs> so go back again real quick. How frequently should someone be posted? I think it depends on your business. Okay. okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm not in, because I've seen a lot of people seize up on their business page and they don't even they don't touch their business page because they feel like oh I've got to post three times a day you know four times a week and I'm you know I think you got to understand your business and what the products are um, and post quality you know I'd much rather you post quality than quantity you know what happens when you press the uh, boost post don't ever do it don't ever do it and, yeah it's like it's like in Lost, that, uh, that drama yeah. button or whatever. I mean, I'm never yeah, pushed. sit there and monitor that. <laughs> so Facebook's smart, right? They understand how lazy we are. Um, the boost post is a way that you can add money to an ad to basically promote it out there. But they understand that the people who are typically going to push this button have no friggin' clue what they're doing. Therefore, you know, there's always a little bit of a fudge factor. I'm always thinking that there's you know, this Wizard of Oz effect at Facebook <laughs> that... <laughs> You know, who really knows how much some of this stuff does get promoted? That when you use the boost button, I think it's almost like it just, you know, your money just falls into this like trash can, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I don't think they use it as wisely. There is a tool that they use called Ads Manager. Ads Manager is what marketing professionals use on Facebook, right? So I think they have a tendency, if you use the Ads Manager, be a lot more honest with your ad budget than they would be with boost post which is something that someone who's never used Facebook before pushes and thinks that they're doing something right 
right? And I know if you've used Boost Post, you're, you know, you're, you're forgiven, okay? But don't ever do it again. Promise me? I did it for $35 a month. It seemed to have worked. I was, you know, like $5 here, $10 here. So you don't think it's effective at all? I, but all I'm saying is it could be effective, right? It, okay. it could be, right? So maybe some of the dollar bills that are like floating into the trash can like get blown out and then actually land into the right bucket. Right, right. Um, but I think using Ads Manager is just a much more okay. effective way um, to run your ads. Okay. So what somebody is... Somebody actually has to approve it through Facebook so they've seen yeah. that you're really doing an ad. That's what I like. <laughs> all right, so what is Ads Manager? You guys ever use Ads Manager? Okay. So over here, there's this uh, this triangle button. So obviously this is where you can go access any of your business pages. There's also this thing called manage pages, create pages. This is where you created your business page. And there are manage ads and create ads. So over here is where we create ads using Facebook's backend tool called Ads Manager. This is like a secret door in Facebook. Um, So this takes you to basically how you would build an ad campaign, <coughs> right? There's a lot to this. Um, I'm not a marketing expert. Um, I know how to do a couple things really well. Um, and I've basically kind of taken a formula and, and applied it with this. Um, so there's a couple things you can do on here in your ads manager. I tend to, on my Facebook business page, create a post. Make sure it looks right, make sure the links are correct, make sure the photos look good. And then I go over to Ads Manager, and this is where I wind up creating my audience, who I'm gonna target this ad at, and then adding that ad to it. And I'll walk you through what this looks like. So first things first, using Ads Manager, creating a custom audience. Does anyone here have a custom audiences? So Facebook, you know, Facebook isn't free, right? So basically all the information we're giving them, they are mining and using, right? So, but one of the cool things for us in business is we can actually start using a lot of those tools to our advantage. One tool you have already in your arsenal is you probably have an email list for your clients, right? You send them an email from time to time, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly of information, right? New product, new service, some brand,